program you are about to hear is fiction, science fiction. We make no guarantees, however, how long it will remain fiction. Exploring tomorrow. And now here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, the editor of Astounding Science Fiction magazine, John Campbell, Jr. Let's consider the proposition that interplanetary space flight has become a commercial proposition. There are regular liners running between the planets. And the Martian Queen, we'll say, is such a liner. A spaceship making a short run orbit from Mars to Earth. Uh, this time she's carrying 150 passengers from Mars to Earth. Uh, this time she's carrying 150 passengers and a crew of 30 or so. She made a long, uneventful trip from space, and now she's approaching the last leg of her voyage, the deceleration for landing. Your attention, please. Uh, throughout the trip, artificial gravity has been maintained by spin around the long axis of the ship. In three minutes, the gyros will begin to slow the spin. We have to stop the rotation around the axis of the ship in order to apply thrust along it. Uh, please get into your bunks and fasten your safety belts. At the appointed time, gyros cut in, slowing the spin on the ship. When the rotation had stopped, the skipper of the Martian Queen and his navigator were ready to begin the actual landing. How's our course, Bill? Dead on, Captain Daring. We're approaching Earth a little over 60 miles per second. <laughs> I need to land at this speed. How much time do we have? About 15 seconds. The rocket tubes are aligned properly with respect to Earth. The timer is set. Ready? Yep, strapped in and ready. Keep her on automatic till the last 5,000 feet. I'll bring her down from there manually. Right, sir. There she goes. Blue, the engine room. Get engineering on the intercom. We're out of control. We're dropping straight toward Earth. The Martian Queen had been heading towards White Sands spaceport. And as a matter of course, the radar teams at White Sands had been alerted for the landing. They had the ship pinpointed in their screens, and when the Martian Queen stopped decelerating, they knew there was something wrong. The major in charge of Control Tower 1 put in a fast emergency call to the commanding officer of White Sands Spaceport. General Stanley speaking. What's that, Major? The Martian Queen. Where? Yes, I understand. All right, get all data you can on her. Now keep the radar tracking as long as possible and try to compute an orbit. I want to know where she's going to hit and get a tight beam communications line to that ship. I want to speak to Captain Deering personally. Yes, Major, I'll be right over. Sergeant, get my jeep out in front fast. We're going to control Tower One. I'll be ready to gun it. This is a class AAA emergency. <laughs> Sir, have you made tight beam connections with the Martian Queen? Yes, sir. Good. Now I'll take the microphone. Hello, Captain Deering. This is General Stanley at White Sands. Can you hear me? This is Deering. You're coming in fine, General. What the devil happened up there? Explosion in the engine room. Don't know what caused it. Four men dead and the rocket tubes are gone. What about the main converter? Almost completely gone. It's one that didn't blow into fragments when it went. There's plenty of heat radiation. The engine crew must have died almost instantly. Well, what about these secondary converters? Nothing left of them but molten metal and slag. You've got no way to slow down the ship or change its course? No way, whatever, General. Our only hope is that we don't hit Earth. If we are on a collision course, we're finished. I know. Let's hope you go on past Earth without hitting it. Now, we have a radar fix on you, but it isn't accurate at this distance. Now, get your navigator busy. Now, we want your coordinates and velocity as close as you can figure them. Oh, keep this line open. I'll call you as soon as I can get more information. Right. I'll get Clement busy on those figures. Over. Over. Oh, Major. Yes, sir. Keep that line open no matter what happens. As soon as Captain Deering gives you those figures, have them coded and put through the big computer. Try to get a closer radar fix and put that data through the computer, too. I want an orbit on the Martian Queen that's as close as skin. You got it? Yes, sir. Good. And keep this whole thing quiet. Nobody is to know that the Martian Queen is in trouble till I've notified the Secretary of Special Affairs in Washington. Meanwhile, I have to use your phone. Operator, this is Major General Stanley. 
I want to put in a person-to-person emergency call to the Secretary of Spatial Affairs, Washington, D.C. Call me back as soon as he's on the line. There are lives at stake. Hello, experimental station? General Stanley here. Now, let me talk to Colonel Athmore. I don't care what he's doing. Get him on the phone. Colonel Athmore, Stanley. What's the top acceleration of that new experimental job? That's right, the XV-19. Good. I want you to have it loaded, primed, and ready to go within 10 minutes. Emergency, I'll say it's an emergency. I want you to move faster than you've ever moved before. I want the XV-19 rocket out on the launching pad and ready within 10 minutes. Now, that's an order. And keep this under your hat. If a word of this leaks out or if that ship isn't ready to go on time, I'll see to it that you never wear those birds on your shoulder again. Is that clear? Good. Keep your line open for further orders. Sixty miles per second isn't terribly fast, as far as celestial objects are concerned. But 60 miles per second is 216,000 miles per hour. And when the Martian Queen had had her accident, she was already close in to Earth. Something had to be done within the next 25 minutes. But what can be done in only 25 minutes? Captain, I just got word from First Officer Haggerty does trouble. Some of the passengers are getting space sick from being in free fall. They're wondering why the ship isn't decelerating. Just have to take it a while longer. Did you get those figures relayed down to General Stanley? Yes, sir. He said to hold on and give us the data as soon as possible. But but the passengers... I know, I know. What did you want me to do? Tell him that the Martian Queen might be headed for the biggest, most spectacular crack-up in history? That'd be real smart, wouldn't it? Well, I didn't mean it that way, Skipper. I, I was... Make the radio phone. That's White Sands again. Deering here. Deering, this is Stanley. How's everything? The same as ever. No propulsion, no escape. How does our orbit look? We have your coordinates down to a hair. We know within a mile or two uh, where you'll hit. Then we will hit Earth. Well, that does it, doesn't it? I'm afraid so. If nothing happens between now and then, you're going to get a hot dunk in the ocean. I see. Uh, where will we hit? We'll give and take a mile or so, or you'll hit Long Island Sound, about ten miles south of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Well, we... You do what has to be done, General. You can depend on me from the end of it. I know I could. Well, I'll let you know how things work out. I'll be waiting. <laughs> The seconds tick by, and every second that passes brings the Martian Queen 60 miles closer to Earth. At that speed, it doesn't take long to move a few thousand miles. The Martian Queen was heading toward death at 3,600 miles a minute. Captain Daring, this is Stanley again. Colonel Arthmore just phoned. We're sending up the XV-19, a super-fast high-acceleration rocket. It's the only thing that can possibly reach you in time, and even so, it'll be a close thing. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get in touch with the Secretary of Spatial Affairs, but he's out of his office right now. I'll let you know when to expect the rocket. All right, General. We'll be ready. Over. Over. Captain, I just came from the dining hall. Some of the passengers got out of their bunks and looked out the big viewport. And then they could see Earth, and they could see we're falling toward it. One of them started fighting with First Officer Haggard, and the thing has ended up in a riot. The crazy fools, this is no time to be fighting. Can't the crew do anything? That time, it's pretty rough. Give me that microphone. Your attention, please. This is Captain Deering. Now, please, your attention. There has been an accident. The drive engines of the ship have been disabled, and we're in a free-fall orbit. However, there is no reason to become panicked. We are in contact with White Sands Spaceport, and we've been notified that everything is under control. Now, some of you have been worried by the sight of Earth through the viewport, but I assure you we are in no danger of striking Earth. I repeat, the Martian Queen absolutely will not strike Earth. I'm well aware that this gravity-less condition is uncomfortable to many of you, but please have patience. It will only last for a few more minutes. I suggest that all of you return to your cabins and strap yourselves in. If acceleration were to return suddenly, anyone not strapped down might be seriously hurt. Please return to your cabins. Thank you. 
Well, that'll help some. Blevin, you go down and talk to them. Give them the same sort of information I gave them. And, Blevin... Yes, sir? Isn't one of the passengers a minister? Uh, oh, yes, sir. The uh, Reverend James Taylor, I think his name is. Uh, he was a missionary on Mars. Yeah, well, get him to help you. Sometimes people will listen to a clergyman when they won't pay attention to a space officer. Right, sir. I'll do what I can. Just a minute. That's Stanley. Yes, Deering here. Deering, the XP-19 is on the launching pad now, loaded and ready to go. I haven't been able to get hold of the Secretary of Special Affairs yet, but uh, there isn't time to wait. Oh, I just got the signal, Deering. The XP-19 has left the launching pad. It will be up to you to guide it into the Martian Queen. Good luck, Deering. Thanks. But you'll need the good luck more than I will. So, good luck and uh, goodbye. Okay, Blevin, go down and give them a speech. This is Major General Stanley at White Sands Spaceport. I have been trying to get the Secretary of Spatial Affairs person to person Washington, D.C. It has been 20 minutes now. Wait. He's on the line. All right. Oh, hello, Mr. Secretary. Hello, General. I got to my office as soon as I heard. I've read the teletype report that you sent to my office. Is the Martian Queen definitely going to land in Long Island Sound? If it isn't stopped, yes. Well, is there any way at all of getting the drive going again? No, sir. Captain Deering stated flatly that the main converter and the secondaries are absolutely and completely ruined. It would take weeks to repair them. We only have minutes. Then we'll have to send up a rescue ship. That's impossible, sir. A rescue ship would never make it in time. It would have to accelerate to take off, decelerate to match the Martian Queen's velocity, and then accelerate to keep from hitting Earth along with the Queen. All in all, it would take more than an hour using every bit of acceleration a human being could stand. Then there's absolutely no way we can save them. None whatever, sir. There just isn't time. Well, we're just lucky this time, I suppose. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, it could have been worse. What if it landed in a populated area like New York City instead of Long Island Sound? You don't understand, Mr. Secretary. It isn't the Long Island Sound we have to worry about. It's the spaceship sound. What do you mean? Just what I said. It doesn't matter whether the Martian Queen hits Long Island Sound or New York City itself. The results will be almost the same. It's the sound waves, the noise that will do the damage. I don't quite understand. You know what happens when a supersonic jet plane flies too low over a city, don't you? At 1,500 miles an hour, the shock wave from a jet plane can break windows from miles around. What do you think will happen when that spaceship comes in at 216,000 miles an hour? It will flatten every structure within a 50-mile radius. If that ship hits Long Island Sound, New York City will be toppling in ruins before it ever arrives. From Newark, New Jersey to Hartford, Connecticut, that shock wave will knock over everything standing. Can we evacuate the area? In a few minutes? Well, hardly. Then what do you suggest, General? There is only one thing we can possibly do. Send up a rocket with an atomic bomb in it and blow that ship into gas before it hits. Are you crazy, General? Blow up 180 innocent people? I can't permit that. And it's murder. Murder? Is it murder to kill people who are already doomed? Is it murder to save the lives of 20 million people? There must be another way. General, I order you to send up a rescue ship immediately. Listen, you blockhead. Do you understand that it is impossible to send up a rescue ship? Do you understand that I can't pull miracles out of a hat? We could no more get a rescue ship up there in time than we could catch the Martian Queen with our bare hands. You can't talk to me that way, General. I'm sorry. I'm simply trying to get you to understand there's only one way out. Those people in that spaceship are going to die, no matter what we do. It would be better if they died without taking a few million more people with them. There must be some other way. Do you have any suggestions? Well, I... Well, no, Exactly. But... There isn't any other way. Now, do I have your permission to send up that bomb? No. We've got to think of something else. It's no use. I just looked at the clock, Mr. Secretary. It's too late to do anything at all now. Even if you ordered it, a, a rocket bomb leaving this instant would be too late. But General, you'll have to do something. All those oh, people... Oh, don't worry, Mr. Secretary. 
the Martian Queen won't hit the Earth, there won't be any crash. I sent up an XV-19 rocket under robot control several minutes ago. It was loaded with a thermonuclear warhead. I would have liked to have had your permission, but there simply was no time. You, you've already blown it up? That's right. I did it with Captain Deering's cooperation, of course. He knew it was the only way to prevent the destruction of 20 million people. So he guided the missile into his own ship. The Martian Queen was vaporized over a minute ago. I presume you know what this means, General? I know what it means. I'll have to be court-martialed because most people won't understand why I did it any more than you did. Even if I get out of it with a whole skin, I lose everything I've ever worked for. But that's a small matter compared with the satisfaction of knowing that I saved the lives of 20 million human beings. Maybe those people will understand why Captain Deering and I did what we did. And they're the ones who count. Yes, as time goes by, things do change, but the fundamental things apply. And the most fundamental of all, really, is you can't walk out on a problem and just let it take care of itself. By the time it gets taken care of, it's ready to take care of you, but good. Join us each Wednesday and Friday night for a fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Script was by Paul Anderson. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. This is Mutual, the world's largest network.